Uh, we are going to be focusing on the book of Galatians, chapter 5, uh, for a few moments on this Communion Sunday. Um, 5, beginning at the 16th verse. Uh, 5, chapter 5, verse 16 of Galatians. And I will be reading from the New Revised Standard Version. It says, live by the Spirit, I say, do not gratify the desires of the flesh, for what the flesh desires is opposed to the Spirit, and what the Spirit desires is opposed to the flesh, for these are opposed to each other to prevent you from what you want. Now, let me say the idea that the flesh and the spirit are opposed to each other is something that needs a deep consideration. Um, it is a very Eurocentric idea that uh, looks at the flesh as negative and the spirit as positive. Uh, but, but, but we are not going to be emphasizing in our sermon today this business of the flesh. Uh, the 18th verse continues, but if you are led by the Spirit, you are not subject to the law. If you're led by the Spirit, you are not subject to the law. So the discussion is about the law and the Spirit. Now, the works of the flesh are obvious. Fornication, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife. Enmities had to do with division strife, jealousy, anger, quarrels, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these, like these. This is not an exhaustive list. There are a whole bunch of other things that go into that category, stabbing each other in the back, a whole bunch of other things. I am warning you, as I warned you before, those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Paul who is writing this to the Galatians, warns them that if they keep up this, these activities that are contrary to the Spirit, they will not inherit the kingdom of God. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Uh, uh, one might substitute self-control for discipline. There is no law against such things. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, competing against one another, envying one another. I repeat the 25th verse. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. Another part Another text says, if we live by the Spirit, let us walk by the Spirit. Um, if, if we are going to be followers of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, then we ought to be manifesting certain things in our lives. Certain things ought to be present. So I want to talk to us for a few moments. I won't keep you long on this first Sunday. On the subject, Marks of the Spirit. Marks of the Spirit. Marks of the Spirit. I, I have a friend. In fact, he is, he, I can describe him as my best friend in the ministry. Uh, if you know me, you will know who that is. He has a, a yard full of fruit trees. Um, he has a yard where he's got oranges and lemons and uh, several years ago, he he uh, planted a kumquat tree. A kumquat. Uh, some of you may not know what a kumquat is. It, it's kind of a, in the orange um, family. And he planted a kumquat tree. He planted a kumquat tree close by the lemon tree. And over the years that we have been friends, uh, he will collect all those lemons 
and he will squeeze them and bring uh, bottles of lemon juice uh, to Alcee and I, and so we can make lemonade. And um, for the last couple of years, his kumquat tree has begun to flourish and provide kumquats. And um, this year, for the first time, we got uh, three bottles of juice that were a result of kumquats and lemons. Apparently, the lemon tree and the kumquat tree have been with the help of maybe the bees in the garden, been fertilizing each other. So now the kumquat tree and the lemon tree are producing uh, fruit that are very similar. And one of the things we have discovered is that the fruit of these kumquats and lemons is very, very pleasing, very pleasing. I wouldn't say sweet but very pleasing. Now, uh, 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 I'm not calling his name because I don't want any of y'all calling him up or asking him when you see him uh, if you can get a bottle of, of, of the juice. But um, um, it is delicious. And uh, we got three bottles about two weeks ago. We have consumed those. Uh, we have enjoyed them thoroughly, and I can't wait for the next, for the next, uh, for the next uh, crop, as it were. Um, but uh, I want us to note that nature has a way of teaching us certain things. Um, the fruit of those trees, the fruit, that is to say the fruit associated with those trees, are fruit that produce something delicious and something sweet. And uh, it seems to me that part of what the lesson of nature is, is that, is that there are certain characteristics that are present when certain fruits are present in the community. You'll get it in a minute. You'll get it in a minute if you haven't gotten it. Um, I'm talking about the marks of the spirit. Now, I've been around long enough now that, uh, that there are a lot of people, um, I would say clergy, who are out there who credential themselves by saying they were mentored by Dr. Cummings. Dr. Cummings is my mentor. And I confess, I confess that there are some of those people who I don't want to be associated with. I don't want them telling me, telling anybody that they have been mentored by me because their behavior, their actions, do not indicate anything that I would sanction or support. I mean, one of them who has never been in a class with me, I have never provided any leadership, claims they are a mentor. This person has not, has barely graduated college. And yet, when I look on Facebook, he has listed behind him several master degrees and a PhD degree. He has barely got a BA. But he's going around saying, I, he has been mentored by Dr. Cummings. And, and there's another young man who credentialed himself in the Faith and Action Network by saying he's, he's, he's a mentor, he's a mentee of Dr. Cummings. And his actions do not suggest anything that I, myself would sanction or involved with. Uh, there are people who I gladly own up to mentoring. There are people who, and there are people who I, I'm not particularly, this reminded me of, 
of a couple of things that recently happened. I shared in Bible class that uh, I heard a parent, a parent was talking about, uh, talking about some stuff that their children did. And the parent said something like, you know, oh, sometimes they embarrass me. Uh, sometimes our children do stuff that embarrass us. Um, and it reminded me of, uh, of uh, Genesis chapter five, that we uh, have studied, are studying in Bible class. Uh, chapter five in Genesis, some of you don't know, is uh, the story of Noah and God. You know, God said, after creating the creatures, the human beings, God said to Noah, Noah, I am sorry I created these human beings. They are corrupt. They have corrupted the world. And because I am sorry, in other words, God said, I am embarrassed that these are considered my product, my children. And, and because of that, I'm going to wipe them out. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to flood the whole world. But the story says that, that God found Noah to be worthy of being saved. And so Noah, because of his actions, God was, God was happy to be saved associated with Noah. God made a special covenant with Noah. Now, all of those stories that I've shared about kumquats and lemons and parents and people who associate themselves with you and say you are a mentor and the story of God and God being sorry God said, I am sorry that I have created them. It's like I created them and they have turned out not the way I wanted them to be. So I don't want to be associated with them. They are not acting in a way that suggests that they are appropriately the fruit of my product. So the book of Gal Galatians, particularly in the in that fifth chapter and beginning in the 16th verse says that there are certain things that are to be identified as fruit of the spirit. Uh, the word that's used in that text, the Greek word is karpos. The Greek word is karpos, Greek word which means it is the result of something. These fruits are the result of the spirit. When you see these fruits, you are knowing and you are understanding that the spirit is present. Last week, we talked about the fact that the spirit is not just any old spirit, but it's the spirit of Christ. It's not just any old spirit. It's not just the spirit of anybody you associate, but it's the spirit of Christ. And when the spirit of Christ is present, in the community of faith, there are certain things that, that are manifested. And, and, and that's what I want to talk about briefly as the marks of the spirit. Briefly, I'm, I just want to lift them up. I mean, the, the text is pretty clear, and uh, I, I don't know that it needs a whole lot of explanation. And sometimes I think the text speaks for itself. It says better what needs to be said. I mean, the text says that if we are living by the Spirit and walking by the Spirit, then uh, there are certain things that will be present. The fruit of the Spirit says the fruit of the Spirit is love. Love. Not hate. Love. If the Spirit of Christ is present, it's a loving community. The fruit of the Spirit is joy. Peace, patience, kindness, generosity, generosity, let me say that again, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, or discipline. I mean, there are eight or nine things listed there as what the marks of the Spirit are, what the fruit of the Spirit are. The bottom line is that if the Spirit of God, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit is present, Christ's Spirit, then these are the fruit that will be present. 
as a consequence of that spirit. Now, on the other hand, if a whole bunch of other stuff is going on, if there's a whole bunch of hating going on, if there's a whole bunch of not loving each other going on, if there's a whole bunch of dissension going on, if there's a whole bunch of divisiveness going on, that is not the spirit of Christ. That's not what the spirit of Christ is about. These are not exhaustive lists. These are not exhaustive lists. And I always try to make sure that I'm clear when I preach about the word of God. Uh, my good friend and colleague, uh, he did mentor me, Dr. Cornell West. Uh, I didn't just read his books. But for three years, when he was teaching at Union Seminary, where I studied, I met with Dr. Cornell West for almost three years, every Thursday afternoon for three hours. And we discussed and read books and talked about ideas. He taught me all of the philosophy I know, and he taught me most of the Marxist theory that I know. Dr. Cornell West said, there's a public expression of love. The public expression is justice. The pub in other words, it's one thing to say you love somebody, but the public expression of loving is justice making in relationship to those people, treating them justly. So if there's a whole bunch of injustice going on, that is not about the fruit of the spirit of Christ a whole bunch of injustice present in society, a whole bunch of injustice being perpetrated by politicians and political leaders and court. That, that is not the fruit of the spirit. It is contrary. It is contrary. There is no way in hell that white supremacy or male supremacy is something that has to do with the spirit of Christ. The spirit of Christ is about affirming the humanity of all people, affirming the dignity of all human beings. The spirit of Christ is about inclusivity, all of God's children. That's what the spirit of Christ is about. And if the spirit of Christ is present in your life as a Christian and in the life of faith, as a community of faith, then what is going to be present is not just love, not just a vague, ambiguous love, but it's, there's going to be a public expression of justice, justice making. There's going to be joy. There's going to be peace, peacemaking, peacemaking. The spirit of Christ is about making peace, not war. Patience. Being patient with one another. <laughs> Being kind with one another being generous with one another, a spirit of generosity, being generous. With, when you are generous with people in your family, you don't immediately go to the worst explanation for stuff they're doing. You treat them with generosity, uh, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Discipline is according to the spirit. <clears throat> now, there's a lot of lack of discipline, but discipline is a mark of the spirit. And I am grateful to God for providing us with some guidelines that can help us as we think about what it means to be a community of the spirit. Now, for a long time, people affirm that when the spirit is present, people speak in tongues. And when the spirit of presence, people praise God. But the spirit of God is about a whole lot more than just those things. Those are just liturgical ritual expressions. The spirit of Christ is a spirit that manifests itself in making peace and loving your neighbor as yourself. That's what the Bible says. Loving your neighbor as yourself. The spirit of Christ is manifested when you love yourself. When you love others. When you don't just backstab each other in the community of faith, the spirit of Christ is present when you live generously with others, when you share what you have with others. That's 
what the spirit of Christ is about. That's what the spirit of Christ is. It is manifested publicly in community. In other words, when the spirit of presence, when the spirit of God is present, it is a public, you are a public testimony to the spirit of Christ. And then people will say, I know that dumb folk are in the spirit. I know that dumb folk don't just talk about being in the spirit, but they also walk in the spirit. I know that those folk are actually people who are testimonies to what it means to be living epistles, living epistles, living testimonies to what it means to walk in the spirit. So brothers and sisters, I just want to remind us this Sunday that while the spirit of the spirit's presence is a spirit of worship and praise and joy, and we ought to worship and praise and joy, the spirit of, of Christ is also a spirit that holds us accountable and responsible to live according to these marks. These marks should be present in our lives so that we can be a testimony to what the Spirit of Christ is about and what the living presence of God is all about. And if we do those things, if we do those things, then we will be found faithful in that great day, in that great getting up morning. God will find us faithful and grant us that well done by good and faithful service. Listen, all we have in the end, is our word. And if we say, I'm a Christian, if we say, I'm a Christian who believes in Christ, if we say we are followers of Jesus, if we say we are followers of Jesus who is manifesting God's spirit in the world, then we have a responsibility to not just pray, not just praise, but we ought to also have the responsibility to be justice makers and peacemakers and to love those around us and be committed to being faithful stewards of what God has blessed us with. And if we do those things, God will find us faithful and we can give God the glory together. And as we prepare to celebrate communion today, we celebrate communion because we say we are followers of Jesus. I wanted to remind us that there are certain marks that go along with the presence of the Spirit. I think they're sweet. Like the juice from those kumquats and lemon trees. They are living testimonies to the glory and wonder of God. And we should give God the praise and give God the glory for having blessed us with God's presence as we continue this journey. Amen.